In this video we are going to recap a movie Dances with the Wolves. Once upon a time, during the Civil War, there was a man named Lieutenant John Dunbar. He became a hero by accident when he led Union troops to a victory. Everyone was singing his praises, but Dunbar knew he needed to get away from the war. He requested a position on the western frontier, hoping to find peace and solitude. However, upon arriving, he found it deserted and desolate. Despite the loneliness, Dunbar persevered and began to explore the wild, untamed land. One day, he stumbled upon a wolf with two white socks on its feet. He named the wolf Two Socks and they soon became friends, roaming the plains together. Dunbar thought he was the only human around until he met a curious Indian tribe. The tribe welcomed him and Two Socks with open arms. Dunbar learned their ways and became close friends with them. He discovered that they had rescued a white woman, who was raised by the tribe, from danger when she was a child. He was amazed by their kindness and respect for nature. Dunbar started to change, shedding his white man's ways and adopting the tribe's culture. He earned their trust and respect, and they saw him as one of their own. Dunbar's adventure on the western frontier had turned out to be more fulfilling than he ever could have imagined. The story unfolds with a sense of adventure and wonder, taking the viewer on a journey through the untamed wilderness and into the heart of a culture that is both fascinating and foreign. From the moment the camera pans over the sweeping landscapes and into the lives of the characters, it is clear that this is a tale of epic proportions, filled with drama, action, and heart. The battlefield was filled with the sounds of gunfire and screams of agony as Union Army Officer Lt. John J. Dunbar fought for his life in Tennessee during the U.S. Civil War. Despite the chaos around him, Dunbar couldn't ignore the pain in his leg, which he soon realized was to be amputated. The thought of living the rest of his life as a cripple like his fellow soldiers was too much to bear. In a daring move, he stole a horse and rode towards the enemy line with the intention of ending his own life. But as fate would have it, his act of desperation became an unexpected turning point in the battle. The opposing Confederate and Union forces had been at a stalemate for days, but Dunbar's reckless charge distracted the Confederates, giving the Union troops the chance they needed to rally and launch a successful assault. The battle was won, but Dunbar's future remained uncertain. After being treated by an experienced surgeon who saved his leg, Dunbar was hailed as a hero by his commanding officer. To show his appreciation, he gifted Dunbar the very horse that carried him through the battle, Cisco, and offered him his choice of postings. Dunbar's bravery had not only saved his life, but had also turned the tide of the war. Dunbar's thirst for adventure and his love for the untamed wilderness of the American frontier was unquenchable. He knew that if he didn't act fast, the looming threat of mass settlement from the east would destroy it all. Determined to see it before it disappeared, he requested a transfer west. Upon arriving at his new post, he was greeted by Major Fambrow, who had slipped into a state of madness, believing himself to be a king from a medieval time and Dunbar his loyal knight. Dunbar was taken aback by the Major's behavior but tried his best to maintain composure. To his relief, he was introduced to his drayage teamster, Timmons, who would accompany him on his journey into the unknown. As they set out on their journey, Dunbar couldn't shake off the Major's odd behavior. Little did he know, Fambrow's delusions had reached a point of no return, and he had taken his own life with a pistol. Dunbar was left to wonder what kind of danger he had gotten himself into, but he pressed on, ready to face whatever challenges lay ahead. Dunbar and Timmons' journey into the unknown was one that promised adventure and excitement, but it was not without its share of danger. The two arrived at Fort Sedgwick, a desolate and abandoned post in the middle of nowhere. As they unpacked their supplies and began to take stock of their surroundings, they were greeted by a lone wolf. Dunbar took a liking to the creature and named it Two Socks, owing to the unique coloring of its front legs. As they waited for reinforcements to arrive, Dunbar took it upon himself to bring some order to the deserted post. The previous occupants had left it in complete disarray and it was up to Dunbar to set things right. While Dunbar busied himself with the task at hand, Timmons set out to return to their point of departure. It was a decision that would prove fatal. On his way back, Timmons was ambushed by Pawnee Indians and scalped. 
The news of his death would not reach Union officers, thanks to the suicide of the major who had sent Dunbar and Timmons to the fort. Dunbar was now isolated, and he remained completely unaware of the situation's gravity. He diligently noted down his thoughts in his journal, expressing his surprise at the absence of any additional soldiers joining him at the post. Dunbar's idyllic existence with two socks was about to come to an end, and he would soon find himself in the middle of a conflict that would test his courage and resolve. As Dunbar settles into his isolated post at Fort Sedgwick, he encounters his Sioux neighbors, who are curious about the fort and its occupants. When Kicking Bird stumbles upon the fort, he tries to capture Dunbar's horse, Sisko. But Dunbar catches him in the act and scares him off. Later, Wind in his hair and his warriors attempt to steal the horse but are unsuccessful when Sisko throws off his would-be thief. Despite the initial tension, Dunbar soon establishes a friendship with Kicking Bird, but communication between them is a struggle due to the language barrier. So, Dunbar decides to take the initiative and dress in his army uniform to ride out and meet the tribe. On his way, he stumbles upon Stans with a fist, a white woman who was captured by the tribe as a child and recently widowed, attempting to take her life. He stops her and offers to take her back to the tribe. Eventually, Kicking Bird and Wind in his hair visit Dunbar at the fort and learn that he is interested in finding buffalo herds. The lieutenant proves himself to be a valuable asset to the tribe when he helps them locate the migrating buffalo they rely on for survival. As a result, Dunbar becomes a hero among the Sioux and is even accepted as an honorary member of the tribe. Dunbar finds himself fully immersed in the Sioux way of life as he spends more and more time with the tribe. He becomes a trusted member of the community and helps defend them against a Pawnee raiding party. In a stroke of luck, he discovers a cache of buried rifles and ammunition near the fort, which he hands over to the Sioux warriors to bolster their defense. As Dunbar becomes more integrated into Sioux culture, the tribe gives him a new name, Sugmanitataka Abwahi, which means dances with wolves in Lakota. He even forms a special bond with his beloved wolf, Two Socks, which endears him to the tribe even more. Despite the forbidden nature of their relationship due to Stans with a Fist's recent loss of her husband in battle, Dunbar and Stans with a Fist fall deeply in love. They consummate their love in secret, but Kicking Bird eventually gives his blessing to their union and acts as a father figure to Stans with a Fist. As Dunbar's ties to the Sioux grow stronger, he spends more time with them than at his post at Fort Sedgwick. Wind in his hair, once his rival, becomes one of his closest friends. Ultimately, Dunbar becomes a beloved member of the tribe, respected and cherished for his bravery and loyalty. Dunbar's peaceful life with the Sioux tribe is shaken when he realizes the threat posed by the encroaching white settlers. He shares his fears with Kicking Bird and Chief Ten Bears, who show him an ancient conquistador's helmet passed down through generations. The chief decides to move the village to its winter camp as a precaution. As they prepare to leave, Dunbar realizes that he left his journal behind at Fort Sedgwick, which contains valuable information about the Sioux tribe. He dons Indian clothing and makes his way back to the deserted fort to retrieve it. But to his dismay, he finds that the fort has been occupied by new army troops who mistake him for an Indian and shoot his horse Sisko. Dunbar is captured and held prisoner by the very people he used to serve. Dunbar's heart races as he realizes the grave situation he's in. The soldiers have discovered he's a white man and assume he's deserted his post. He tries to explain that he has a journal with his orders for his posting at Fort Sedgwick, but they don't believe him. Spivey, one of the soldiers, even denies the existence of the journal, despite having it in his pocket. They beat Dunbar mercilessly, but he refuses to give up. Eventually, he manages to blurt out in Lakota that his name is Dances with Wolves. The officers and soldiers decide to take him to Fort Hayes for execution. As they march towards their destination, they come across two socks, the wolf that Dunbar had befriended. The soldiers try to shoot the animal, but he refuses to leave Dunbar's side. Dunbar pleads with them to spare the wolf's life, but it's too late. Two socks is fatally wounded, and Dunbar is hit in the head again. The convoy moves on, leaving behind a devastated Dunbar and the lifeless body of his loyal friend. 
Not long after the convoy had moved off, a war party led by Wind in his hair and other Sioux warriors attacked the column of men, saving Dunbar's life. Smiles a lot found Dunbar's journal floating in a stream and returned it to him. Back at the winter camp, Dunbar realized that staying with the Sioux would put them in danger from the army, who would come looking for him as a deserter and fugitive. Despite the protests of his Sioux friends, Dunbar decided he must leave the tribe to speak to those who would listen. To his surprise, Stans with a fist decided to leave with him, declaring that they were now two of a kind. As they rode away, the Sioux watched them go, knowing that they might never see them again. As Dances with Wolves and Stans with a fist made their way out of the winter camp, Wind in his hair shouted after them, declaring that Dances with Wolves would always be his friend, a reminder of their first meeting. They rode for days, making their way through the rugged terrain, always keeping a careful eye out for any signs of danger. As they crested a hill, they saw a column of cavalry and Pawnee army scouts making their way toward the Sioux campsite. But as they rode closer, they realized that the site was empty, and the tribe had already moved on. With a sense of relief, they continued on their journey, not knowing what lay ahead but determined to face it together.